Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining into this um, Google Classroom session. So um, I heard that this is probably like one of the hottest um, session that we've been hearing. We've been uh, getting a lot of requests um, from you guys saying that, uh, you know, you would like to learn more about Google Classroom and here we go today. And I noticed that there are still some people uh, that you are actually showing yourself on the webcam, uh, which I do not mind if you don't mind to actually have some interaction with other people in this session. And also, uh, but uh, I would appreciate if you could actually turn off your microphone while I'm talking to avoid uh, other people actually hearing some noises. Is it okay? Okay, cool. And now um, let's let's get started. So uh, I just want to confirm everybody can actually see my screen, right? The one that I'm actually showing my presentation slides. Yep. Okay, great. So, uh, so let's look at uh, what we're going to learn today. So first of all, I'd like to uh, introduce myself to you guys. So uh, my name is Wayne and personally, I'm a Google certified trainer and I've been working uh, within the education technology industry for uh, seven years now. So wow, time flies. And um, across, um, within the past seven years, I've been working in across the Asia Pacific uh, in a few countries such as Singapore, uh, which was last year, I was actually working on a Ministry of Education Singapore project and also um, in Hong Kong, in uh, Philippines, in Thailand, in Vietnam. Basically, uh, my job is to help teachers to uh, use technology in a better way uh, in the classroom teaching and learning. So uh, um, at the same time, right now, uh, I'm also one of the trainer in ITRAIN Malaysia. So uh, let's say after this, if you guys have any sort of question regarding G Suite for Education or Google for Education, you can just feel free to contact me. All right, so um, let's get started. So for today, I guess everybody is actually aware of the topic, right? So uh, the main focus of the topic, basically we're just gonna focus on Google Classroom, okay? And here comes, I'd like to ask you guys a few questions. So how many of you here, um, you have experience of using Google Classroom like probably less than six months? So let me check your message here. Okay, I've got some friends here saying, okay, more than a year. And then I have people saying, yeah, less than six months. Yes, I do. Less than a week. Wow, okay, you are very new here. So I'm really glad to see you guys here today. Okay, uh, so basically just for information, this is a uh, beginner session and we're gonna focus on uh, the usage, the basic usage of Google Classroom for 30 to 45 minutes of the session. And then we will leave like about 15 minutes for the Q and A, okay? So, but of course, like meanwhile, while I'm talking, if you have any question, please feel free to actually uh, type in, in the conversation uh, in a chatting, site okay so that i can actually see your message um okay let's get started so first of all this is once you log into google classroom okay uh this is what you can see if you have classes all right so let me show you how can you a few ways okay for you to actually go into google classroom so first of all i guess everybody is aware that you can actually go to this Google Apps button on the top right, okay? 
you know, when you want to access to all the apps, you can actually go here and then you find the apps that you want to assess. Okay. So as you scroll down, you can actually see Google Classroom. Okay. For information, this button is actually available in all the apps that you can see. Okay. For example, today you are actually in Gmail. Okay. And you are not sure where to go to find your Google Classroom. You can actually go to the top right. Okay. Right next to your photo, you can actually see that's a nine dot button. That's a menu button. So you just click on it and you scroll down, you can see Google Classroom. Okay, that's one way. Okay, the second way is basically for you to just type in classroom. Okay, classroom.google.com. Okay, and then you'll be able to go into your Google Classroom. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at today for those who are really new, like less than less than a week or you're entirely new, never used Google Classroom before, I guess that's the reason why you are joining this class. So we're going to start with creating classroom. Okay, so if you go to the top right, you can see there's a plus button. So here's where you can create your classroom. So let's assume that um, the IT department in your school or uh, the IT teacher in the school, uh, they never help you to actually set up any classes. So you have to actually set up yourself. So this is how you do it. So once you click on create class, okay, you get to see there's a pop-up like this. So first of all, I'll have to set, set the name, okay, of my class. So I'll just give it like, usually what I like to do okay for a better management is that i will set the name um basically the year first okay for example now is like 2020 okay and then i'll follow by uh, the subject for example english okay and followed by the class name probably okay 3a for example all right so and there is a section here okay after after you created your sorry after you have actually inserted your name you get to see section subject and room okay these are basically optional okay for you to actually fill in so section normally uh, you can use it for either uh, for your class year or for your um, learning year or for anything okay that you would like to actually uh, insert okay and subject, of course, is related to the subject that you are teaching, okay? And room, okay? This will be basically the classroom, okay? And once it's done, you just click create, okay? And you have to wait like probably like less than five seconds and the classroom will be created, okay? So done, okay? Here we get to see a new classroom is created. All right. So while I'm doing, you can actually feel free to follow my steps, okay? Um, and so far, can everybody follow? Cool, okay? So everybody is still on track. So. If you look at my screen now or your own screen now, okay, you can probably see four different tabs on the top right. Okay, so you can see like stream, you can see classwork, you can see people, you can see grades. Okay, these are the things you can see once you have actually created a new classroom. All right, so right now we're gonna go through one by one. So, first thing first, you are actually on the stream. Okay, and so what does stream means? Basically, I'm pretty sure you guys use uh, social media, right? Like at least Facebook, okay? For those who don't use it, probably you have seen it before, okay? Okay, when you're using um, Facebook, when you're using social media, you get to see like a wall, okay? Or like a news feed, we call it as new news feed or a wall, which uh, it's somewhere you can see the post of everybody within your friend list, okay? In Google Classroom, 
under your stream, basically, this is somewhere you get to see all your posts and also anything that actually posted by your student. Okay. And of course, like once you have actually created your new classroom, you will have to add in your students, right? So without student, you wouldn't be able to use your Google Classroom because um, you wouldn't be able to use it like in a right way, okay? So as you can see, there's a class code here on the top under your class name. So you might be wondering, so what is this for? Okay, basically this is the code for your student to join into your classroom. So when you click on um, this, uh, button the full screen button you get to see the class code so this is when you get to actually show it to your students so let's say if you are actually on a call okay with your student like we are doing right now you can actually show it to the screen to say that hey join my classroom okay or there is another way for you to add your students into your classroom okay can everybody see people tap on top so if you go to people tab, you get to see teachers and students. Under teacher, you should be able to see your own name, okay, over there. So, and of course you can also invite other teachers into your class to actually kind of like be an assistant for you, okay? Let's say sometimes if you are not free or sometimes um, you, you need somebody to help you on assigning some work or maybe checking the work of the students, you can actually type a name or email of the teacher to invite them into your classroom, basically to help you, okay? And of course, now we're gonna look at how to add students. So it's very simple. You get to see invite students button here. So once you click on it, you can type the name or the email of your students, okay? At this point of time, I guess you guys might be having a question in your mind saying that, hey, um, I have like over 40 students, or over 30 students in my class. How am I going to like type in email one by one? Okay, here. So, which is why, okay, you will need to have like a group emails, okay, which you can actually add in all the students within the group email. Let's say your class is 3a okay and you can set the group email to be 3a at school abc.com okay and once you type in 3a so you'll be able to add all the students into your class but of course normally i would actually recommend teacher to use the class code okay for the student to add themselves into the class okay and then at this point of time, you might be actually asking me, okay, so right now I'm showing my class code to the student. How are they going to add themselves into my class? Okay, here's how. So they'll actually have to go back to the login screen and then they click on the plus button. Of course, student will not be able to create class, but the only thing they can see is join class so they can click on join class and they just have, have to paste or type in the class code here and click join okay and they will be added into your classroom all right okay let me check the questions that you guys are having here so uh meanwhile you guys can think about some question that you might want to ask me okay What's the difference between login through sites.google.com? Show now. Okay, let me check Amir's question. So I'm guessing that that's a link provided by MOE, right? Okay, let me just take a look at your link.
Okay. Um, for Amir's questions, I've actually clicked on the link that you provided um, in the chat. Okay, that's actually a web, like a platform that uh, set up by MOE. So, uh, which I do not have like a valid login. So, uh, I'm not able to actually log in to check uh, what's in it. So, probably I would have to um, check it out with the MOE team first before I get to get back to you, okay? So perhaps you can actually uh, drop me an email after this so that I can actually send a reply to you, all right? And let's look at other questions. So could I invite using Yahoo email? Okay, um, the question is no, because uh, everybody needs to have a Gmail account in order for you to start using Google Classroom, okay? And it has to be a school Gmail account because if you are using a normal, like a personal Gmail account, you will not be able to add students into your classroom, okay? By saying um, school email account, it means that um, everybody actually has an email uh, which is like a code followed by at moe.edu uh, something. So this will be the email that you're gonna use to log into uh, your Google Classroom and also um, same for your students as well, okay? Can we edit the given class code? Um, no, okay, all the class code are being generated automatically by Google Classroom, all right? Uh, Can I delete student who is accidentally enter using the class code share? Yes, you can actually remove them, okay, from the people tab. Okay, last question here. So MOE teachers, okay, we have to use MOE Gmail given by our admin, IT admin. Yes, correct. So as Lynn here, okay, uh, so as Lynn, is actually asking, uh, should you actually use the Gmail provided by MOE? Yes, definitely. Because uh, by using that, you'll be able to use uh, Google Classroom, okay, without any problem, all right? So let's continue. So on the stream here, okay? So I'm pretty sure, okay, right now, some of the teachers, like you might be actually having some announcement or some message, okay? You would like to actually uh, tell your students, okay? During this like uh, MCO, okay, in Malaysia, like we, are, we, we have to stay home, so we cannot go out. And of course we cannot go to the school. So how are we going to inform, okay? Our students on certain thing, like for example, um, like we need them to self-study, okay, on something. We need them to watch a video and then answer questions, or we just want to pass a message to make sure that they stay home all the time, okay? So here is it. So on your stream, you can actually make an announcement. So once you hit post, everybody will be able to see your message. So for example, okay, let's assuming that, uh, Tomorrow, okay, we'll be going to school, going back to school tomorrow. Okay, let's assuming that. Okay, we'll be going back to school tomorrow. Okay, so we'll say, hi students. I'm sure you're excited to be back to tomorrow. Please remember to bring to have a face mask and hand sanitizer. Sanitizer along. Okay, so that's assuming that this is the message that I would like to tell my students. Okay, okay, we're coming back to school tomorrow. Okay. I want them to bring a face mask and hand sanitizer along. So, um, and of course, I'd like to attach uh, something for them to watch, okay? 
for example, I would like to post a YouTube video, okay, regarding English literature. Okay, I can actually search immediately, all right, within my Google Classroom. Okay, meanwhile, please watch the video. Attach, load. All right, so I've actually typed a message for my students, okay, share my class. Um, I need them to watch a video, okay, which I actually found on YouTube. So I can actually add it here by clicking on add button and you get to see there are four different um, platform or four different sources you can get okay the first one is actually from directly from your google drive okay second is that you can actually paste a link here so whether uh it could be a link of the blog or it could be a link to a news page uh or to any page on the website okay just ensure that it's a, a safe website for the students to assess okay and you can actually attach a file so you can upload it directly from your computer and just attach it here or you can actually actually post a youtube video just like i did okay once i've actually get everything done i type my message i attach my video okay i can hit post button of course okay not yet here's something i'd like to show it to you so if you click on this tiny button over here Okay, you get to see three options. Okay, post, schedule, and save draft. Okay, we're gonna look at schedule. So assuming that um, you know that, okay, you're gonna be pretty busy uh, for the rest of the day today, but you only want this post to be posted like later in the afternoon. So you can actually schedule it to be posted automatically for later on, okay? So when you hit on schedule, you can select a date, okay? For example, today, 26, okay? And I'll have to set a time. So I'll just say 3 p.m., okay? So do take note that it has, so for this scheduling announcement, it has to be for the future, okay? Not like for you to do it like back in time. All right, so select a date, select a time. And once you hit on schedule, this is what happened, okay? You will see, oh, it disappeared. No, it did not, okay? So you can see saved announcement on the top. So when you click on it, you get to see there is a saved announcement here. So, and it's showing you this is your message and that's the time. So if you like to take a look, you can actually click on it. So this is what you can see. Okay, so let's say right now, um, I've decided, okay, I do not want to schedule it for later. I want to just post it right now. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I just have to click on the delete button on the top and hit on post. Okay, and I hit post. So here we go, you get to see post created. And on your stream, you get to see one post, okay? Wayne, Wayne from iTrain, okay? Wayne teacher has actually posted a announcement here, okay? So students, they get to actually comment as well. So let's say, there is something you'd like to edit in your post. You'd like to add more messages. You'd like to add more information. You can hit the edit button here and you add more message and just hit save button. Okay. Okay, let's see. I can see that you guys are having some question here. Can we just type the name of the pupils? Yes, of course. You can type the name of your students and while you adding them into your classroom, okay? And you'll be able to see like to their email address, all right? And of course, um, before that, you will have to make sure that they have set a name for the email address so that you can actually find them using the name. 
okay? Can we use our email address, not the MOE email? No. Uh, let me tell you why, okay? Because when you are using a personal Gmail address, okay, you will not be able to add anyone into your classroom, okay? So uh, it might not, it may not be convenient for you, okay? So how the students will be notified about any new post teacher made? Is it through their email or will need to log into Google Classroom as well to read the notification? Yeah, I'd like to know how students notify there is a new post too. All right, okay. Students, they will be they will be receiving an email, okay, anytime when you actually uh, post something, okay, whether it's assignment, whether it's like classwork, whether it's um, questions or announcement, they will actually receive it. And of course, like there is Google Classroom app available on the App Store as well. So nowadays, all the students, they have a smartphone with them, okay? Or maybe I should say not all, but most of the students, they actually have smartphone, okay? If they, if they download like an app in their phone, they can actually check okay, they work all the time and they'll be receiving the notification through the email, okay, so that they get to know, okay, um, teacher, um, that teacher have actually posted something on the Google Classroom, okay? So after we look at uh, posting announcement, okay, do you guys have any questions? Clear? Yes, okay, cool. Okay, everybody's clear. Okay, now I have a question, okay? I'm pretty sure like every one of you here, you guys are actually teaching more than one class, right? So sometimes uh, you might be thinking that, okay, I want to have like the same announcement for all the classes that I'm teaching. So, but now I've actually posted it here in one classroom. So am I gonna just copy and paste to all the classroom? No, okay, this is what you can do. On the top here, you can see on my screen, there is a reuse post button here. So you can actually click on it, okay? And then you get to see all your classes. So, what am I gonna do is to select class, okay? And once you have selected your class, you get to see there is an option here, create new copies of all attachments. So whether do you want to create all copies? So in this case, I would say no, okay? And I'll just select the post that I'll run, I want to reuse. So I posted this one, so I select it and, and then I will reuse it and post it into other class, okay? So once I've selected, so this is basically exactly the same as what I actually created, okay? Before I announce it. So I can actually click here, okay? For classes, I can select more classes here okay if you have more class all right so now once you selected all the other classes you get to see five classes okay so now i'm gonna pose four five classes okay where can we get the video do we have to download it first mm, not necessary okay so we have a friend here asking like, how can you get the video? So let me just repeat the step very quickly. So when you are typing your message here, you get to see there is an add button here. So when you click on it, you get to, you can choose to upload, okay, your video. Let's say if you actually film a video, you can upload your video onto your Google Drive, okay? Or you can actually, uh, just select one of the video or search for a video on YouTube, okay? Directly here. So you can just search for any keyword. So let's say chemistry year four. 
So I'm looking for something that is related to chemistry year four. So I can search within Google Classroom itself, but it's actually uh, search through YouTube and I can attach YouTube video into my post. Okay. All right. So the next thing, which is like one of the one of the core feature that I believe most of you would like to get to know, which is to create classwork. Okay, I'll need you guys to actually go to classwork tab. So once you go into classwork tab, okay, this basically you can what you can see. Okay, it's empty. Okay, assign work to your class here. So you get to create assignments and questions and you get to organize your classwork with your topics and you get to reorganize everything here. So first of all, we have to create something, okay? So once you hit on the create button, you get to see assignment, quiz assignment, questions, material, reuse post, topic. So I explain to you one by one. All right, so first of all, we're gonna create an assignment. So today, everybody's staying at home okay and as a teacher uh we have to we have to keep our work going okay we have to make sure that uh, students are still learning students are still doing work even though they are not allowed to go out okay in fact we should actually assign them some work so that they will actually stay home be a good boy and then just do their work okay so we'll create a title here so um let's see what sort of title we will say activity one okay because this is an english class so i'm gonna say async all right okay that's gonna be my title so and i'm gonna say my hero for example okay i need them to write an async my hero okay Okay, we have our friend here saying that uh, cannot hear me, is it? Can you guys hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, cool. Great. All right, so let's see. Okay, once you have actually inserted your title, okay, um, you have to insert your instructions. So I'm pretty sure every one of you, you have your own set of like personalized instruction for your students. You can probably type, okay, describe like describe your hero that you Okay, for example, okay, I'll meet my student to actually describe their hero, their hero that they admire with not less than 250 words, okay? It's just an example, and I can actually add something, okay, for them to refer. So, so what I really, really love to do is that I'll, I always love to actually add some video so that it makes learning more interesting okay and they get more ideas for the work as well okay so we can say uh let's see my hero no maybe we can say scientists Okay, you can just type in any keywords, okay? So here I found top 10, uh, yep, uh, let me see. Okay, we just get this. Okay, I found a video here. So I need them, to, it's actually up to them whether they want to watch or not, or they want to actually pick the heroes from uh, one of the uh, scientists here within the video, okay? They can actually watch it and then they write the essay. Of course, before they write, okay, they would have to, they would need like a document for them to actually write the essay, right? So that they can submit it to you. So what I'm gonna do here, I have to attach 
like a document from my drive. Okay. So, um, of course, before that, you will have to actually create something. So, I'll go into my Google Drive, I'll hit new, and I create a document. Okay, basically, this document is going to work as like a, a worksheet for them to write the essay and submit it to you. Add the title. And I'm gonna copy the instructions and paste it here. Maybe do a little bit of settings. And done. Okay, it'll be automatically saved within the Google Drive. And now what I can do is to attach a file from Google Drive. So here we go, A say my hero. So I'll just add under my post. Okay. So once you have added into your assignment post before you post it, here's something that you have to take note. Okay. There are three different kinds of uh, ways for you to share it with your students. So by default, okay, you can see students can view files. So which means student can only view or read, okay, the document that you attach to this post. So, which is not a purpose that we want, okay? And second, students can edit files. So, this means everybody will be doing their work on the same piece of document. So, which I don't think is the main purpose of us asking them to write essay as well. So, we're going to choose the last option, which is make a copy for each student. So once you select this, so instead of assigning like the same assignment to all your students individually, so Google Classroom will automatically create a copy of this document to each every student. So each every one of them, they will have their own document copy, okay, which they can write their essay and then they can submit it to you. All right. So once you have set everything, once you have actually attached um, all the documents, video that you want to do it, so you can start to set the points. So by default, okay, the points for each assignment is by hundreds. You can actually change it, okay, if you want to. So I'll just make it by default. 400. So I'll, I will set a due date so that students they actually know, okay, when should they actually submit the work. So I'll just set it on 31st, okay. You can even set the time, but of course it's optional. It's up to you. So Oops, somebody muted me. Okay, I'm back. Um, all right, so uh, once we have actually set the due date, okay, and the time, you can see, okay, next Tuesday, um, 31st of March, by 9 a.m., my students, they should actually submit their assignment. All right, and topic, so no topic by default. Okay, and here I would actually recommend you um, to actually start creating different topics to categorize your work so that in the future it will be easier for you to find all the work that you have assigned to your students and it's easier for you to track back. So, create topics. So, it could be anything. Okay, it could be something that you just want to categorize the type of work, or it could be the chapters, it could be the name of the topic. Okay, it could be anything. It's up to you. Okay, and for me uh, personally, I prefer to actually categorize my work based on 
a type of assignment. So for example, this is essay. Okay, I'll actually type it as essay under the topic. So here is uh, a very interesting inter interesting um, topic here we are talking about that you can actually add rubric. Okay, and you can create a rubric or you can import it directly from Google Sheets. Let's say you have it. Okay, in this case, we're gonna create it here. So this is what you can do. All right, you can type uh, what's the criteria. So the first one. Okay, you can add different criteria. And I'm gonna type grammar. Okay, and you can insert a description and a point. All right, this is excellent. Good, excellent for one more. That will be okay. So, yep, and you can add more. Okay, so this will be easier for you to basically um, do your marking after that. Okay, after this, so um, you can create more different categories. So of course, like this will be more on the advanced side, okay? So today we're gonna look at a basic site, okay? For you to learn how to actually create assignment first. All right, so once I've actually set everything, you can decide whether you want to assign the same assignment to different classes, okay? I can select three classes, for example. And the same thing here, you can also, um, save at, as draft or you can actually schedule it okay but for different classes you cannot actually schedule it okay you have to actually assign to only one classes in order for you to be able to schedule it all right so in this case i'm just gonna assign it directly i'm just gonna hit assign Okay, let's see. Done, okay. So now, on your left-hand side, you get to see all topics, okay? And I get one topic here called assignment, okay? And under assignment, I get to see activity one assignment, my hero, all right? That's the title that I've set. So let me explain to you, you might be actually wondering what are this number four, okay? So, because right now I do not have any student in my class, so you will see zero. So let's say I have 30 students. I get to see, I've assigned it to 30 students here. And as soon as my students start to turn in the assignment, I get to see the number of assigned students here getting less and less, and the number of turning in getting more and more. Okay, so you can actually click on view assignment and you'll be able to mark your assignment from here. Okay, and now we'll go back to class. Okay, let's see if you guys have anything here. So, um, do uh, my assignment after adding link or YouTube cannot assign post, but only change to draft. Um, cannot assign post. Probably uh, you have to make sure that you have actually key in all the compulsory column. So for example, the name, the descriptions, okay, the due dates, so that uh, you can actually assign your assignment. 
okay? So the next thing we're going to look at basically is the quiz assignment. So what's the difference in between assignment and quiz assignment? So when you hit on quiz assignment, okay, a Google form will be automatically created. Okay, this is the interesting part. Okay, so when you hit on quiz assignments, the blank quiz Google Forms will be automatically created. Of course, you have to click on this Google Form to start adding questions in order for your student to be able to actually start answering your quiz. Okay. So due to the limitation of our time today, so um, for the quiz, for the editing of quiz, I would actually leave it to you guys uh, to actually explore it after this, okay? Uh, but if you have any questions regarding like, assigning the work, you can actually ask me today, okay? So meanwhile, while waiting for your questions and while uh, letting you to explore, I will show you, okay? assigning a questions in your Google Classroom here. So when I say assigning a question, it means um, students, they can actually answer it by commenting on your post, okay? Directly in your post without accessing to any of the Google Docs, all right? So you can actually ask a question here. So let's see. What is your favorite Malaysian food? Okay, what is your favorite Malaysian food, for example? Okay, and you get to select whether it's short answer question or multiple choice. In this case, I think it's kind of like a um, like an open-ended question. So everybody can have their own question, so can have their own answer. So I will make it as short answer question. Okay, and you get to actually put instructions here. And same thing, you get to add in YouTube video, Malaysian food. Just type Malaysian food to search for it. Okay, I will attach this. So ultimate Malaysian food. Kuala Lumpur, okay, for the student to watch. And then um, same thing, I'm gonna set a due date or not, okay, because it's a question. So I'm just gonna leave it as open and I'm gonna create a topic, say, open and question, okay. So student can reply to each other. So this is gonna be up to you, okay? Whether you want to allow the student to be able to reply to each other or not, okay? By default, it should be yes, okay? And students can edit their answer. So do you want your student to be able to edit their answer? So normally teachers will prefer not to do it because um, some students, they might see other students answer and then they might actually edit it. So it's some sort of like cheating, okay? So it would not be good. So I would just leave it there. So I'm not gonna allow my student to edit the answer. So, but I allow them to reply to each other so that there will be more interaction. So that's the main purpose of using Google Classroom, okay? So, and I'll ask the question. So now you get to see, under my topics, I have two different categories. So one is open edit question and another one is essay. And Oops, somebody muted me again. Okay, uh, thanks for the feedback. So, so the same thing, um, if student actually answer a question, you get to see, okay, their answers here. 
So, and of course they can also add commands, okay, which is separate with the answer. Okay, somebody is actually requesting for me to repeat, okay? So, I'll repeat here. Okay, so um, once you have created your question, so now I have two topics here. So one is open-ended question and one is essay. So under my classwork, I get to see two different categories here, okay? And under here, that's a question that I've just asked. So I can actually click on view questions and I get to see the answers here, okay? Provided I have students answering my questions. So let's see if you have any questions. Okay. Um, most of my kids give the same response. They can't send their paragraph or answer through Google Classroom. Why? As for now, I tell those who cannot either to email me or send through WhatsApp, but what can I do if I want them to answer through Google Classroom? Uh, I think you will have to repeat uh, your question like, you have to elaborate it. I don't quite understand, like, what do you mean by uh, you want them to answer through Google Classroom? Do you mean, like, um, when you ask question in Google Classroom, they are not able to answer in paragraph? If that's the case, um, it's because uh, when you ask questions in Google Classroom, it's supposed to be short answer. Okay, it's not supposed to be a paragraph. So I believe that is like a uh, certain limitation of the number of words that they get to actually key in there. Okay. So where are the people going to type the answers? Do I need to attach a document? So, okay, when you ask the questions, you are not, uh, you do not have to attach any document for them to actually, uh, put in the answer. And of course, if you want to, you're allowed to, but uh, you don't have to because they can actually just uh, post the answer under the questions, which everybody can actually see. So that's the purpose of having this uh, posting question as assignment, okay? And usually when you post a question, it's not supposed to be something that, uh, that requires some sort of grades. Um, you know, it's supposed to be some questions that you would like to get that very quick answer for everyone. It's like a quick test after like a certain lesson. Okay. So after students write their essay on Google Doc, they still need to press turn in or just leave it. Okay, they have to click turn in, okay? That there will be a turn in button for them to click turn in. So once they turn in, teacher, you will actually receive like a notification within your Google Classroom, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, what do I do every day? Is I have to hang out with them and ask them to. Okay. Um, Okay. Okay, now, next thing, okay. So once you have actually, um, mark everything okay assuming that uh, you have somebody actually turn in the assignment and you click on turn in here okay to check their work and then uh, you will see like individual work here i have no students here that's why i cannot actually show it to you but let me see if i have any other class i can show it to you 
Okay, here, let's see this one. Okay, for example, so once you have assigned the work, this will be something that you can see, okay? I have two students here and this is their work, okay? But of course they haven't turned it in. So once they turn it in, you'll be able to see the number here change, okay? Um, but still, you'll be able to click on the work to see whether they have something written on it, okay? Okay, can you also provide examples on how to use other options such as multiple choice, drop down? Okay, sure. Okay, so when you assign a questions, um, there is only two different types of question that you get to ask. So let me just create a question here. Okay, and on the right hand side, you get to see there's a selection here. So you can only get to choose short answer and multiple choice. Okay, you cannot actually create like a drop down or check boxes. So we have actually created short answers. So right now we're going to create a multiple choice question. Okay. So let's type this. For example, plans require all of the elements below for photosynthesis, okay, accept. Okay, this is my question, okay? And I'm, in this case, I'm just gonna leave my instructions as blank and I'll just key, key in the answer. Okay, so I have actually put in like three options for them to choose, okay? Um, my question will be, plants require all the elements below for photosynthesis except, okay, sunlight, water, and oil, okay? So, same thing, you can attach anything you want, okay? Or, sorry, and you can set a due date, and you can set a point, so, and you can select a topic, okay? Student can see class summary. So in this case, do you want them to see like a summary of answer? So when they select an answer, they get to see the percentage of people, of the students actually select this answer. So do you want them to see it? So if you want them to see it, you can actually check this box, okay? They'll be able to see, okay, 30% actually select sunlight and 50% actually select oil. So uh, this is the example and you hit as. Okay, and here we go. We have two questions here. I can select a question to check and see. So look, right now, I do not have anyone answering my multiple choice questions. As soon as I get somebody answer my questions, okay, they will actually, the number here will actually change. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at, okay, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the class settings here. So which uh, might be helpful for you, okay? So you can see the gear button, okay, the settings button on the right-hand side, on the top right, okay, over here, all right? So when you click on it, so of course you get to see the class details that you have set when you are creating a classroom and you get to see general class code. You cannot change it, okay, but you can reset it, okay? Let's say, okay, in this case, let's say, um, 
all of your students, they have already joined into your class. You want to disable it. You want to stop people from joining in. So you can actually click on disable. So even though some people, they might be still having your class code, but they will not be able to join. All right. And the next thing we're going to look at is the stream. So this is like one of the most commonly asked questions by most of the teachers because sometimes they find it um, a bit like annoying when too many students are actually posting different things on the stream at the same time. So, and this option here can help you to reduce the post or to help you to avoid student posting unnecessary information on the stream. So you get to select on the stream, student can post and comment, okay? Or student can only comment. They cannot post anything, but they can comment um, the post that you have actually posted. For example, okay, your student can actually um, leave a comment to ask you a question under the announcement you have just announced, okay? Or only teachers can post and comment. So when you select this options, it means student can only do the assignment, can only do the work, but they cannot post anything. They cannot uh, leave any comment under your post. So which I, I think there will be pros and cons, okay, for each of the options here, but it's pretty much up to you. Okay, how do you want to use it? How do you want to set the permission? Okay, I would actually recommend most of the teacher to actually use students can only comment. So in this case, they can still ask uh, you question. So they can still have some sort of interaction with you. Okay, at the same time, um, you don't have to worry about the student posting something that they are not supposed to post. Okay. So classwork on the stream. So how do you want it to be shown? Okay, you want to hide notifications or you want to show condensed uh, notification or you want to show everything. Okay, this is up to you as well. All right, so let's say if you delete something, do you want, uh, do you want to still see it? Okay, if you still want to see it, whatever that you have deleted, you can actually switch this on so that you know, okay, uh, they have deleted something and it will be actually placed under the deleted items category. All right. And a great calculation. So how do you want a grade to be calculated? It could be, it, you can set it as like total points or you can actually put it by categories such as like A, B, C, D, okay? Or there is no overall grades at all, all right? Show overall grade to students, so yeah. So this is a part like whether you want to show the grades to the student or not, okay? Usually, uh, if there is no overall grades that you want to show, you will not be able to switch on this option. So you have to select an option in order for you to actually switch it on, okay? And if you actually select the grading the calculation mode to be by categories, you have to add the great, great categories here in order for you to show it to your students. Okay. And because for today's session, we are actually focusing mostly on the basics usage, basically for you to learn the fundamental knowledge on how to use Google Classroom, okay. Uh, this will be pretty much that uh, we are learning today, okay? If that's say uh, you guys would like to know more, um, perhaps you can actually contact me and we can actually have a separate session for a uh, more advanced kind of course. Okay. So for now, um, it's coming to the end of our session today. And I would actually, even though we have actually exit like seven minutes, okay? But um, 
I'm happy to be here for about 10 more minutes to answer your questions. Okay, a lot of people say, how can you contact me? Okay, I'll leave, a, I'll leave my um, contact information on the screen in a while. Okay, so meanwhile, you can ask me questions if you want to. Okay, so for those of you who actually wonder how can you actually contact me, so this is my email address and um, let's say if you'd like to get like a group training with your fellow colleagues, you can actually um, feel free to contact me and uh, we will try to uh, we we'll try to actually see if we can actually arrange any sessions with you guys uh, for you to know more, for you to learn more, and not just Google Classroom, but also like uh, other apps such as uh, Google Sites, Google Calendar. Okay, for those of you uh, who have actually joined my session on Tuesday, you have learned about uh, Google Calendar. And of course, there are many more other apps as well. So you can feel free to contact me uh, to arrange for it. If you need like fundamental, more fundamental uh, courses, uh, I do have it. And if you like to have some sort of like advanced courses, we do have it as well. Okay. Okay. So let's see if you have any questions. So thank you, thank you for your time as well. Yeah, I've tried to attach Google Doc for answering the essay, but no submit button to select a copy for each student. Okay, so phone here. Okay, I have actually received uh, similar questions like this, like saying that you have actually attached a Google Doc, but you cannot find, uh, select a copy for each student. So you have to be careful. Sometimes people actually accidentally uh, create like a Google form instead of Google Doc. So and in that case, you will not be able to create a copy for each student, okay? You have to make sure that that's actually Google document, okay? When we say Google Doc here, it means Google document. Can I have the link to claim, uh, please, Alice? Uh, sure, okay, why not this way? I would actually put it on my screen for you to be able to claim your hours as well. So for those of you, um, for those of you who did not actually key in your attendance, you can actually claim your hours uh, through this code here. Uh, sorry, not this one. Let me just find it. Okay, guys, just a minute.
Okay, guys, I have actually attached uh, the barcode, the QR code on my screen. So you guys can just feel free to use your phone to actually scan on this code for you to key in your hours, okay? Okay, cool. So uh, I noticed that uh, some of you have already left the room and um, I would basically, I guess that's pretty much uh, for now, for today. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for your attendance. And um, I do really hope that you guys have actually learned something today uh, because um, I've been getting a lot of requests on uh, the Google Classroom training. And um, and I personally, I find Google Classroom uh, is a very, very useful uh, app for teachers and students. So, oh, okay. I get to see people say, okay, very useful and clear session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for your feedback. And when is my next session? So uh, at this moment, I uh, today will be my last session. Uh, for this week and also uh, for the for the future I will be I'll try to actually arrange for a session with uh, Google and MOE but at this point of time um, we are not sure yet uh, I do not have any pre-scheduled session um, but I'm pretty sure they you guys will get informed you guys will actually receive like a uh, a list of sessions so once we have actually confirmed everything since that um, the MCO is going to be extended but um, for now I have no extra information on that so uh, do stay tuned uh, and also stay safe um, during this period of time and stay home okay so thanks guys thanks for attending and I'll see you around bye bye